Alrighty. Well, good evening to everyone. Good to see you this evening. We're going to sing a couple of good old songs. The first one we're going to sing, I am thine, O Lord. You see it up here on the screen, I think. Yeah. So let's sing together. I am thine, O Lord. Father, which art in heaven, O oh Lord, we come into your presence again this evening, thanking you, Lord, for another day. Thank you, God, for the bountiful blessing you've given us, Lord, in the beautiful day. Now, Father, you've given us an opportunity to gather together in your house again. We ask you, Lord, to help us this evening as we study your word. And, Lord, as we'll pray for each other. And Lord, we just ask you, Father, to help us. Lord, we, we thank you. Lord, we want to thank you for the help you've given us. Lord, in the watch care, and Lord, how you've been good to us. Forgive us, God, where we fail to praise you as we should. And Father, thank you for these that are here tonight. I pray you'll bless them, Lord, and, and uh, they'll receive something that will help them to serve you better. And Lord, for those that's listening by the way of live stream, we pray for them. Whatever their need may be tonight, we ask you, Lord, to bless them. Lord, help us all, help our nation. And Lord, you just meet with us tonight as only you can. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, now we're going to sing together, There Shall Be Showers of Blessings. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers. 
there's a blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of Drops round us are falling, but for the showers we bleed, there shall be showers of blessing. Send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing. Come and now honor Thy word. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall, now as to God we're confessing, now as on Jesus we Round us are falling, but for the showers we bleed. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor May. All right, anybody in need of a prayer sheet? Alrighty, well, you see all the announcements here. Take, uh, pay attention to those. Uh, the Christian Issues live stream Zoom meeting. That's a Zoom meeting tomorrow at eight. Uh, Friday prayer time. And then, of course, our Sunday service is Sunday. And uh, Brother Russ, you still up Sunday evening? All right. So Brother Russ will be uh, here Sunday evening. So uh, be praying for him. If you order School of the Bible books, uh, then they're here. See, Pastor Mays after church, and he'll get you your books, and that starts on the 8th of September. That will be live stream as well, so you can watch it at home if you want to. Uh, but nonetheless, that's every Tuesday, unless you are notified otherwise, starting September the 8th. Okay. And we hope not to change it, but we probably have to a time or two, usually the way it has to happen. Okay. All righty. Now, let's see. Uh, prayer requests. Let me give you some things here. Uh, add uh, Tony Bell to your hospital list. That's Sue Goodwin's son. He's still in the hospital. Continue to pray for Maggie Buchanan, and Oscar Dishner. And then some requests from this morning. Um, uh, of course, uh, put Herbert Ham on your prayer list. He needs prayer. And Marguerite Hebb, still having uh, trouble with her back. So let's remember her today. And um, Gail Connor is scheduled for knee surgery on the 21st of October. But we need to pray for her. She's having a lot of pain with her knees. So uh, let's pray for her. Between now and the surgery, pain to be eased up. And then, uh, let's see, uh, we had a request to pay for the folks in the line of the storm. I guess there's a hurricane was landing down in the, I guess the Gulf, ain't it? Yeah, down around Texas. Yeah. So, uh, so let's pray for them folks. And uh, was a quest for a Lam the Lambert family this morning. And the loss of a loved one. Okay, and you see on the back of your the special requests. Remember those uh, folks facing some surgery, needing surgery, 
our country's on here, our church. Uh, of course, I always pray for the situation we're in in our world today. The world needs help. It needs God's help. That's what it needs. Amen. All righty, pray for the lost people. Anybody else tonight? Okay, yeah, pray for school. A lot of folks heading out to school. Some done gone. And other schools going to be starting up. Pray for the Mays family. They'll be traveling in the morning, right? Down to, to take them girls to school. Yeah. So pray for them. Did I see some? Angie Edwards. All right, let's remember this this one. Uh, remember Renee with me. She was the bad one in the when the infection and the surgery. Okay, Renee McKinney. I'm gonna continue to pray for her. Remember uh, Patty Bradley? Patty Bradley? Yes. Yeah. Pray for these churches that are under attack. And Sue's brother, Harold, put him on your prayer list, Harold Steele. Karen Alvis. Karen? Karen Alvis. All right, let's remember that one. Linda Hicks, okay. And uh, also Yvonne Van Tepper prays that Robin gets to come home tomorrow. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. Pray for Robin. Just remember her. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mildred. Mildred, okay. Mildred Walker. Sandy? Sandy Cruz. Yeah, just pray for her. Remember her today. Well, we have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? Yeah. Oh, baby Gabriella? Yeah. Okay, yeah, let's pray for her. Okay, baby Gabriella. Any others? Benson Shorter. Benson Shorter. You say Benson? Benson. Benson Shorter. All right. Well, let's praise God for his goodness, Amen. for his watch care, for his uh, hedge around us. Amen. And pray for Folks that are sick and uh, those those that are facing this COVID disease. And then we've got folks facing other stuff. You know, there's still other stuff out there. Folks are needing help with. And Brother Russ mentioned the churches. I don't know if you've been keeping up with some of the churches. Uh, they've been, uh, been under attack here lately. Uh, so we need to remember them. They're uh, making decisions to stand on what is right. So we need to ask for help for them tonight as well. Well, any unspoken requests? We've had some come across the internet. Okay, others? All right. Well, let's look to the Lord tonight and ask for His help. Our Father, which art in heaven, oh God, as we gather once again in Your holy place, we thank You, God, that You've given us this moment and this time together, Lord. We can gather and study Your Word and sing these great songs. and Lord, bring our requests and petitions to the throne of grace. For Lord, we know that it's at the throne of grace that we'll find help in a time of trouble. Find strength, Father, to go on another day. Find the, uh, the uh, answers that's needed when we don't even know what to do or what to even say. Father, you have, you have those things already figured out. So, Father, we want you to forgive us. I ask you to forgive us of our sins and our failures to recognize that our help comes from you. 
Lord, help us to be mindful of what you have said in your word. And I thank you, God, for people still willing and ready and desiring the fresh, the fresh fruit of the word. Lord, for that's all that's going to help us in a time of disarray, in a time of confusion. The word of God is powerful and it's strong and it's steadfast and sure. So, Father, help us to remain there. Help us, Father, not to be caught up in the world's ways, but, Father, to be caught up in the Word of God. And, Lord, I thank you for these that are here tonight. I pray your protection upon them. Thank you, God, for watching over us another week, protecting us, God, and bringing us safely here. For those that's listening by the way of live stream, I know many of them have requests tonight. We pray for them. Lord, and whatever their need may be, we ask you, Lord, to help them tonight. Father, we pray for our church, and we thank you, Lord, for watching over us and taking care of the church, and Lord, for providing for us, and we thank you for that, and we pray for our services coming up, Lord, this Sunday, that you'll bless them, Lord. Uh, to the glory of God, may they be pleasing unto thee, may some people be reached with the gospel. And Lord, I pray for the many needs that's been mentioned here tonight and today, pray for Maggie Buchanan in the hospital, and Oscar Dishner and his wife, and Tony Bell, and Lord, we want to pray for Herbert Ham. Lord, in his need, we pray for Gail. She'll be facing surgery coming up. Ask you, Lord, to ease her pain, Lord, now while she waits. Pray for Marguerite Hebb as well. She'll help her, Father, with her pain and her back. Patty Bradley, we pray for her tonight, Father, and her need. And, and we pray for uh, uh, Angie Edwards has this disease. It should be with her. Renee McKinney, pray for her tonight. Pray for the schools and, and these young men and women going back to school and Pray for the Mays family as they travel and others as they'll travel, Lord, to places of abode. Give them all safety. Bring them back safely. We pray for schools that are starting. Lord, even our school that's going to start pretty soon. We ask you, Lord, for watch care and just, just keep us safe, Lord, as we try to go about and do what is right. Pray for the folks that's in the pathway of this storm coming in to our nation. Pray, Father, for their safety and help during this difficult time. And, Father, we pray for... Uh, these unspoken requests that's been signified here tonight, Lord, you know the need, and we just ask you, Lord, to meet it according to thy will. Pray for Linda Hicks tonight and her need, and we thank you, Lord, Robin Cleaver, that could come home, and all things went well. We ask you, Lord, to be with her, and we pray for Mildred Walker tonight and Sandy Cruz to be with her. We pray for baby Gabriella tonight, it has been mentioned. We pray for Vincent Shorter, that need, and Lord, we ask you for these on our prayer list tonight that's lost. Not, not only even on the prayer list, but those in the hearts and minds of people need to be saved. God, we pray for revival among our people, among this land. And Father, I pray for the special needs. I pray for our nation. Oh, God, how it needs your help. Lord, will you just help our leadership, our president, the governor, watch over them and give them wisdom. Help us, Lord, as church leaders to do the right thing. Lord, do what's pleasing unto thee. In these churches, God, are facing these difficult times. Pray for them tonight, Lord, that you'll help them. Give them the boldness to stand, Father, upon the Word of God, according to the Word of God. And Lord, we pray for others in need of a touch of your mighty hand. Pray, Father, you'll help them. Those that's waiting on surgery, those that need help. Uh, maybe there's people facing uh, financial needs or uh, difficult decisions they've got to make in their life. God, give them wisdom according to, you, to your wisdom. Father, thank you. And we can gather in this place. Thank you, Lord, we don't have no trouble gathering here. But, Lord, help us that if trouble should come, that we will make our mind up to stand upon what God has said to do. And, Lord, we pray for many others that has been requested here tonight. Lord, we pray for uh, Sue's brother Harold, which will be with him, and for, uh, Karen Alvis in that request tonight. God, we don't know what to do, but, Father, you know what to do. So, Lord, we ask you now to strengthen us. Give us wisdom in the Word of God tonight. And, Father, may we leave here with something to help us have a closer walk with Thee. Lead us and direct us in the way You'd have us to go. In Christ's name we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, we're in the book of Jeremiah. And we're in chapter number 2. We've completed chapter 1. Last week, we saw an introduction there uh, to Jeremiah. We saw Jeremiah's call and to be a prophet. 
And we saw his hesitation. We saw God's promise to him that uh, he was going to be with him and go with him uh, and help him with what he is called to do. God told Jeremiah, you don't pay any attention to their faces. They're not going to like what you say. They're not going to like the message you're going to have to bring to them. By the way, as we'll talk about tonight, it's their own fault. It's not Jeremiah's fault. It's their own fault because they thought they had a better plan than God had. Amen. We'll see tonight so many, so, so many similarities to our own land today. As we begin to talk about the failures of the children of Israel and some of the things that they had done and, and, uh, and some of the things that, uh, which, which has brought them to this place of judgment. You see, God intended on them to be the example people. And they were his people. You remember? From the time, that, and they're still his people. But they are a wayward people. Uh, they are a uh, people that uh, are under judgment because of their decisions that they made according uh, to to God and, and things God. Now, chapter two, chapter two, all the way through chapter ten, uh, is is uh, records the public sermons of Jeremiah and uh, different sermons, different things. But it'll take us all the way through chapter ten. Now, chapter two, um, which we're not going to get the entire chapter tonight, but chapter two will deal with strictly backsliding Israel. And, of course, other places will. But this chapter specifically deals with the backsliding of the nation of Israel. And he's going to compare them to a lot of things, as we'll see as we get started uh, tonight. Uh, the message in, this, this, in chapter 2, uh, this 37 verses long, the message in chapter number two is, has three parts to it. Number one, uh, Jeremiah will compare Israel's past with his presence, w w where they were and where they are now, you'll see. They are not where they are when they started out. Uh, because they started out, if you remember, and we'll go back into the book of Exodus for just a little bit tonight, because it was there the, where a covenant was made with them. We could call that a marriage, amen, Uh when they became God's covenant people. And they made promises to God. you remember? We'll obey. We'll follow. We'll do. Uh, you know, we don't have no problem with that. And they do pretty good with it. You know. Until they get into the land and conquer the land. Then once they conquer the land. Well it just falls all to pieces. Because then they take up their idols. And they take up the worship of their idol gods and so forth. So Jeremiah will compare Israel's past with their present. Second of all, God will ask a question as to why his people would choose to do this. God himself is going to ask the question, why, why, why would you do that? And then thirdly, Jeremiah will give a look into the future. Now, so we're going to, we're going to uh, probably get down through about verse 20. Tonight, matter of fact, that's as far as we're going to go, because that's as far as I got this morning. That keeps my mind one track, okay, Just so, so you understand. But, uh, but anyway, Jeremiah chapter 1, um, chapter 2, let's begin in verse 1 and 2 tonight. Now, um, let me give you this. In verses 1 through 8 of this chapter, uh, we, we have Israel as the unfaithful wife. Now, let's look here, verse 1 and 2. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying... Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness in a land that was not sown. So here's how he starts out. First of all, in verse number one, he's telling you this is not my words. This is God's word. God told him, I'll give you what you need to say. You just need to be bold enough to say it. Amen. You need to be bold enough to preach it just like I give it to you. I told you last week, I think I did, uh, that I read where one commentary said it this way, uh, that Jeremiah was a, uh, he was a famous prophet, but not a popular one, you see. Why was he famous? Well, everybody knew who Jeremiah was. Uh, and they knew what Jeremiah said 
Unpopular? Popular? No, because they didn't like what he said. You see. And so, but God said, here's what you're to say, and you're to say it. And first of all, we see in verse 2, go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem. Uh, notice, notice the words go and cry. Uh, you go and tell them. You go and tell them what I said. And here's what he says. I remember thee. Now he's taking them all the way back. I remember thee and the kindness of thy youth. You know, the kind, how kind they were and how obedient they were to God and how willing to follow God when they first, especially when they were exiled out of Egypt from bondage. You see, they were ready and willing to follow God. And, and uh, uh, he says, uh, I remember thee in the kindness of thy youth and I couldn't help but think of a young child. You know, when you think of a young child, a young child is willing to follow. Amen. His parents, his mom and dad are... are you know, you've got to watch. Sometimes they'll follow anybody. But, uh, but you, know why, you know why they'll follow their mother and their father? Why? Because they trust them. Amen. They trust them to lead them in the right place. And they trust them to take them to the good places where they need to go. Well, that's how Israel was to God. God says, I remember you in your youth when you was willing to serve, when you was willing to follow, and, and uh, you, you would follow, and you, you made those promises to follow. You know, children, something else, ain't they? Oh, that we was all like children. Amen? And we would have a whole lot less problems today because children, they follow, and if they get angry, it's short-lived. Amen? But he says, I remember thee in the kindness of thy youth. Notice this. And the love of thine espousals. The espousal period was that time of God's deliverance out of Egypt until the former marriage which took place at Mount Sinai when a covenant was made with God's people. How precious they were. And how I mean, it just goes right back to the willingness of them to listen to God. And it was here at Mount Sinai, if you remember, and we studied the book of Exodus that God made a covenant with his people. And they made a promise to God to follow and to obey. In verse number 3, the Bible says, Israel was holiness unto the Lord. And the first fruits of his increase, all that devour him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. So here in verse 3, Israel was God's first fruit. They belonged unto God and God belonged unto them. You see, there was a covenant there. And uh, by the way, you mentioned anyone who would do them any harm, what was going to happen? Well, they had to deal with God, didn't they? Anybody was going to do harm to, to, to his children, they had to deal with God, you see. God was their protector. God was their helper. And, uh, you know, he told them back in the book of Genesis, chapter 12, I think it was, that uh, I'll, I'll bless them and bless you, and what? Curse them that curse you, you see. And all this depended upon their willingness to obey God, you see. By the way, the same thing is for us today. God's promised to take care of His children, but what is the condition? We must obey God. Amen. That's right. We must obey God. How can we expect God's willingness to help us if we're going to forsake His his word and forsake his love and forsake, you know, hey, how do we expect? And by the way, I think that's what people expect. I think there's people today expect, I'm a Christian, I can do what I want to, and God has a responsibility. Well, that don't go along with it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But there's people there. That's the way people think. And uh, obviously that's the way Israel thought. Go with me right, just quickly to the book of Exodus, chapter 19. We'll just read a couple of verses. Um, of course, they're at Mount Sinai, and, uh, and in Exodus chapter 19, down about verse 3, I guess. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's start reading verse 3. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called, out, uh, called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings. 
and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if, now here, here it is in verse 5. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So here, God's covenant with them, God's promise with them. You know, I'm going to go with you. You're going to obey me. The condition is, you need to obey me. Now, verse 4 and 5 of our text, back to our text. The Bible says, Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. So verse 4, who's he speaking to? He's speaking to the house of Jacob. Of Israel, you see. Verse 5, thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that they, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and are become vain. Now, speaking to Israel, we got that in verse 4. The Lord simply asks the question, basically he asks this, what happened? What happened? He says, what have I done? Yeah, that's like right. Like this. Yeah. The love we once shared, you are now giving to another. You see. What happened? What caused this? What turned your mind back from, by the way, God had been good to him. And so what in the world has happened? What fault, he's saying, did your fathers find in me that would cause them to walk after vanity? What in the world could have went wrong? Because let me tell you something. God had been faithful to them. How had God been faithful to them? Well, God had been faithful to them through the wilderness wanderings, had he not? Amen. Even though they were forced to Wander in the wilderness, God still provided for them. Their clothes never wore out. Uh, you see, God took care of them even in the midst of their own mess. You see. So God had been good to them. God had took care of them. He had led them and they had followed him. Uh, but once they conquered that land, once they conquered the land of Canaan and they got in the land, what happened? They didn't do it. They didn't do what God said, did they? They didn't follow God's instructions. They didn't do as he commanded. And the next thing you know, they're called up in the mess of the land. They're called up in the idol worship. And now they're trading God and they're mixing God up. Now God, their, their Jehovah God is now mixed in with all these other gods. And we're just going to worship everything and anything. And uh, God would just mix God in and call him part of them. Well, it doesn't work that way. You'll see. And so, uh, the problems arose. Now, uh, hold your place here and flip back to Judges for just a moment. The book of Judges, chapter 2. I want to spend just a moment here uh, in chapter 2 and verse 10. And I want you to look here how this verse and what we're talking about tonight is a mirror picture of the world we live in today. Look at just, uh, Judges, chapter 2 and verse 10. And also all that generation were gathered under their fathers. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. You see, once the generation was gone, there arose another generation. And what does it say about that generation? They knew not God. Not only did they know not God, but they knew not what God had done. You see. Oh, they didn't care what God had done. You see, they became a rebellious group. And, and they, they uh, no acknowledgement of God. God didn't even enter into the, the picture. You see, there arose a generation of people after them where God was not important. Where worship of God was not important. We can just worship. You get your God and I'll get my God and we'll call it even. Huh? That's what I was going to say. Are we, is that not a mirror image of where we're at right now? You tell me what kind of generation is coming up behind us. Or even maybe on down a little further behind us. Uh, according to how old you are. But uh, 
Right. Well, let's think, you think about this generation coming up. You, uh, and you just take a note of our, our generation. That's some of this generation coming up today. Have no respect for God. No respect for God's house. No respect for the history of this nation. No respect for what it costs to get where we are today. Amen. I mean, the freedoms that we have and, and what, it, what, it, what we have suffered to get there. No respect for people in authority. Amen. You see, there's this generation coming who thinks it's okay to just throw God in the mix and pick you out one. Amen. I mean, that's the generation we have today. They got no respect for what it cost uh, us as a nation. They got no knowledge that we were, we were born out of, out of the Bible and out of the belief in the Bible. They don't care. They're tearing our country all to pieces. Stuff that people's worked to hard to build up and, and, and things that people have, have given their life for, now they're just ripping it up and tearing it up. You see, that's the generation coming up. Much like the generation that's coming up here for the children of Israel. They, they've just throwed God in the mix. And by the way, we'll see here that punishment's coming to this group. What do you think's coming to the group coming up now? Judgment. Judgment's going to be coming just as quickly. Verse number six. Neither said they, where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt? And led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through and where no man dwelt. They quickly forgot what God had done. You see, no remembrance of the goodness of God. You see, no praise for what God has done. You know, you, 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 ever, you ever met people today that just think they've done it all? You know, I, met a, I was telling them this morning, I met a guy some years ago, and uh, he, he was, he, his big thing was, you know, I, don't, uh, I, I make my own way. God's done nothing for me. And why should I praise God when, when I, it's me, I do it, I take care of it, I make it. God hasn't done really anything for me. Uh, I've made it myself. I said, okay, big boy, hold your breath. He said, what? I said, hold your breath. Because God makes you, makes you to breathe. God gives you the air to breathe. Amen. That's what he's done for you. He's given you life. He could take it away just as quick. Amen. You see, they forgot what God done, and they began to put themselves as, the, as what was important and not God. You see. Verse 7. And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, when ye entered the land, ye defiled my land and made mine heritage an abomination. God had provided for them. And what thanks did God get? They defiled the land. You see. Uh, they just defiled what God had given to them. Now verse 8. The priest said not, where is the Lord? And they that handled the law knew me not. The pastors also transgressed against me. And the prophets prophesied by Baal. And walked after the things that do not profit. Now here in verse 8. Not only was the laity of the people guilty. But also the leadership was guilty. In this verse, he mentions the priest. He mentions the teachers of the law, the rulers and the prophets, those who were responsible for teaching the right things, those who were responsible for telling them the right way. They're corrupting themselves, and they're caught up in the scandals, and they're caught up in, in the ways of the world. Amen? Let me tell you, it's a, it's a picture of our world today. How many churches today have given in to the ways of the world to please the world? You'd be surprised. How many of them now have said, well, if we're going to make it in society, we're going to have to act like them in order to get them. Listen, if it goes beyond the preaching of the gospel uh, to save somebody, you, you, you just might as well quit. <laughs> Amen. Well, we don't have to have a, a light show, and we don't have to have a, a whatever, you know, to bring people. To, all you need is the Bible. If that don't do it, there ain't nothing going to do it. You see, now, 
the priests had, had quit. And they, they were leading the people the wrong way and the teachers of the law and all those people had been given. What they had done, they had traded the God of heaven for, God, for, man, for God's made by man, you see, for idols. And they were putting their hope, in, not only in idols, but we'll see in just a moment, they're going to put their hope in nations around them. Instead of trusting God, now they're going to reach up to the north and down to the south, and, and they're going to try to find help that God has already promised to give them, you see. But now we're going to look somewhere else because we're not satisfied with God. or We don't even know who God is and what God has done. So we're going to reach out to, to other nations as we'll see. In verses 9 through 13, he talks about broken cisterns. How many knows what a cistern is? How many's ever drank from a cistern? Huh? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I was telling this morning I remember the cistern. When we first, when Dad first built the house that we lived in, our water came from a cistern up on the hill. Now, it changed after that. But, but for a long time, we had a cistern. And, of course, you know the cistern catches God-given water. And it runs down into a big old concrete thing. And uh, but the biggest fun we'd have is once a year, you, we'd have to drain the water out and climb down in that thing. Because you had, you'd have to have a ladder to get down in it. And we'd take it and scrub it and clean it, you know, because, you know, dirt got in it and all that kind of stuff. And we said, you drink that stuff? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, you clean the worms out and the dirt and the bugs and all the skitties and, and uh, uh, well, the best drinking water you ever drunk. Uh, scorpions. He cleaned one in Costa Rica and that was full of scorpions. But a cistern, you know, is for water. And uh, we, for years, that's where our water came from, from, from the cistern. And when you have a dry spell, you go up there and drain it, clean it out, you know, get the, because stuff would settle down in there. Things would get in there sometimes. And, I mean, you know, this is the way it was. And you drank it. But anyway, broken scissors, let's begin verse 9. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord. And with your children's children will I plead. Let me tell you what you see in verse 9. God's mercy. Yeah. Still, God is merciful to this un, unthankful bunch. Yet His mercy still is extended to them. You see. For He says, uh, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord. Not only with you, but your generations to come. You see. Verse 10, For pass over the isles of Chittim and see... And send unto Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Now, uh, what he's saying is, you just go a little bit west now. If you go west, this Chittim and Kedar was located west of, of, of the children of Israel. And he said, go west, and you'll find Chittim and Kedar. And what will you find there? Well, they were lands of idol worship. They were the people of these lands were given to idol worship. And he says, what will you find? What will you find there? Look, look at verse 11. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory from that which doth not profit to that which doth not profit. What's he saying? He said, you just go a little bit west and you'll find people that are faithful to their God. Even though their God is a fake God, it's, it's going to do them no good. Uh, they, they can't talk. They can't do anything. They're, woods, uh, they're, they're idols of stone and of wood. But here's what you'll find out about them. They are faithful to their God. Like a yeah. Muslim, yeah, that's right. Exactly. Just exactly like Jehovah Witness, the Muslims, the Mormons. They're faithful to their false God. Amen. You don't believe me, I don't know how much door-to-door -door they're doing these days, but, but you ever got visited by one? I bet there's not a home in here that somebody knocked on your door trying to get you a false, give you a false God. Amen. They're faithful to it. And here's what he's saying, but my people, 
the ones that has a, a God that's alive, one that's watched over them, one that's took care of, care of them. But what have they done? They have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. They'd rather have that dead God than a God that's alive and that has helped them. A God that can do nothing for them, they would rather have than a God who has took care of them. Now, isn't that, isn't that where we're at today? You see? Basically, what he's telling them is, the heathen have not changed their gods, but Israel changed theirs. God's own people had changed their God into a God that could not and will not profit them. Verse 12. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. Verse 12, basically what he's telling them is what you're seeing should bring you to great fear. Matter of fact, the word has that idea of the hair standing up on your arms. Of so that's where it ought to bring you. It ought to bring you such fear. Can, can, can I say this about our nation today? Some of the things that we're seeing today ought to bring us to great fear. It ought to scare us to death to see how people are acting and to hear what people are saying and what people are putting their check mark on. Uh, and what, you know, uh, and, and, and what, how people are acting during these times of, of, of uncertainty. It ought to bring us to fear. Amen. Pastor Mays and I watched uh, yesterday. Uh, I don't know, probably, probably we, we received an invite from Dr. Sexton. It's on YouTube now. I would, what was the name of that? Do you remember? Settled Science. I would encourage you to go watch that. It has to do with his COVID. It's a, it's, what kind of scientist was he? Nano scientist. You know, you go watch that in full. Um, if, if that don't make the hair stand up on your arms to see what they're going to do and what's coming and all this, COVID's all part of this. Uh, you know, he said that, you know, you know how many people has died from the COVID disease uh, across our land? You know what percentage has died from it? True COVID death. True. 0.3%. Yeah. You already just go watch that. It, it'll, it'll scare you to death to know what they're getting ready to do and what their plan is with the vaccines. Uh, unsettled? No. Settled science. Dr. Clarence Sexton. Go, go search Dr. Clarence Sexton and settled science. It should pop right up on YouTube. It's about an hour long. He talks to this scientist. And uh, matter of fact, the scientist, I think he's working now at Crown College. Isn't he? He's the dean of their science. Uh, and uh, he was an a nanoscientist. And uh, so it's very interesting. And it's those kind of things. And I'm surprised between me and you, YouTube still keeps it up. Uh, well, that's, God, that's God's greater than YouTube because they've been pulling stuff like that off of there. And he begins to talk about the abortion and, and what they're doing with aborted babies and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, it, it, so go, go look, Dr. Clarence Sexton and Settled Science. Look it up on YouTube and watch it. You, it'll, 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 it'll make you, I tell you, it, 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 it really got me to think. And I got to get done here now. I got to stop there. Okay, let's go to verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn them out cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot, that can hold no water. So two things they have done. One, they've forsaken God. And look here how God is described in this verse. The fountain of what kind of water? Huh? Living water, fresh water, good water, clean water, uh, exactly what they needed. That's what God had given them, you see. But no, they, they decided they didn't want that. So uh, they didn't want the good, clean water. So what do they want to do? They hewn them out their own cisterns. And, and by the way, cisterns that couldn't even hold no water. Wasn't worth nothing. They would rather have that, so that that's full of dirt and grime. Uh, and no good for them, as opposed to what God had given them, you see. 
By the way, can I tell you, that's why people today are trading the goodness of God for the dirt of this world. They'd rather have the dirt than clean water. Amen. I was so glad when we switched from a cistern to the spring. It was better water. But nonetheless, uh, you see, but, the, but people today are choosing those kind of things. Okay, verse 14. Israel is a servant. Is a homeborn, is, he a, is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? Now, Israel has become a slave. Uh, and, or has Israel become a slave? And by the way, the answer to that is yes, but by their own choosing. You'll see. Uh, they chose it. That's what they wanted. That's the pathway they wanted. And so they have become a slave. Verse 15. The young lions roared upon him and yelled, and they made his land waste. His cities are burned without inhabitant. This word lion, the young lions, uh, represents the nation of Assyria. And you, Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 29, write that down and go back and read it. But, but here in, in that verse, uh, Assyria is called a lion, you see. So this young lion represents Assyria. So instead of looking to God, instead of looking to God for help now that they've got in trouble and now that things is happening, now what's going to happen? They're going to begin to look uh, anywhere but God for their help. And the first place they do, they turn to the north uh, to Assyria for help and they become slaves, you see. They become slaves. Look at verse 16. Also the children of Noph and Tehaphanes have broken the crown of thy head. You see these places, Noph is another name for Memphis, which is part of Egypt. And Tehaphanes, this was a place between Egypt and Palestine. And what has happened is, this is some of the places that Israel now has turned looking for help. And when they turn looking to, to the world for help, guess what happened? They got, they got mixed up with the world. You see, they were instructed to drive them out of the land, wasn't they? But instead, they now mix up with them, you see. And they become slaves to them. Now, verse 17 says, Has thou not procured this unto thyself? And that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God when he led thee by the way. Verse 17, basically, here's what he's saying. He's saying you have made your choice. When God had led you in the way, you have made your choice. And they have now made their choice to trust in man and man's gods. So, uh, verse 18 says, and now, what hast thou to do in the way of Egypt? To drink the waters of Sihor. Or what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria? To drink the waters of the river. For verse 18, now, what are you going to do? This is a choice you've made. You decided you wanted them instead of me. I, I, I had you a clean path. I had you clean water. I had good things for you. You chose their way. Now, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? i tell you what you're going to do. You're going to drink their water. The Sihor is a, is a branch of the Nile River. And if you study the Nile River, it's dirty. It's not a clean river. It's a dirty river. But that's your choice. Now you get to drink the dirty water. You get to drink the water of, of, <coughs> of these others. You see, um, what do you say? Of Syria. You get to drink the waters of the river. You'll see. In other words, you've heard the old saying, you made your bed, now you got to what? Sleep in. Now you're going to have to sleep in it. You see, by the way, can I tell you, God will allow us to wall in our own misery. Amen. When God provides a way for us and a pathway for us, if we choose another pathway, God will let us go and he'll let us wall in our own misery. A good example, the prodigal son. He decided he knew better than dad. He could make it better than dad had it for him. So he took off. Next thing you know, you find him where? In the pig pen. Wallering in his misery. Amen. Looking back toward home. You see. And so God has allowed them to have their way. And now instead of fresh, clean water, they're drinking dirty water. 
and they don't like it. It was their choice. Now they have to live with it. Verse 19. Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord thy God, and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord of hosts. Here's what he said. He based on what he said in verse 19. You've made your choice. Uh, your own wickedness will be what corrects you. And your backslidings will be what reproves you. You'll get tired of being in misery. Amen. It's amazing to me. Today you talk to people and their, their life is, a, I mean, they're, they're in misery. Misery. I mean, the way they're going and the things they're doing and they can't understand. And you try to tell them, you know, this is not what God has for you. God has a pathway for you. and They don't want to hear that. They would rather stay in the misery. I never could understand that. As some people, miserable as all get out, but won't change it. Just see. They want to live in that. They think that misery is the only answer they have. You see. They've turned God down. They want nothing to do with God. So what they got left? Misery. We can choose to go our own way. God will allow us to live in our own misery. Verse 20, and this is as far as we're going to go tonight. For of old time, for of old time I have broken the, uh, thy yoke and burst thy bands, and thou saidest, I will not transgress, when upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest play in the harlot. Verse 20, God compares them now to that of a wild animal or to an animal that will not wear the yoke. You know, the yoke is put on the animal to keep him in line, to keep him going the right way. But every once in a while you get that stubborn animal, animal won't wear the yoke. Amen. And it just goes everywhere. Well, that's what he compares them to here. Uh, and he says in this verse, they say we will do right and we'll not transgress. But here's the problem. On every high hill and under every green tree, in other words, everywhere, you have played the harlot. You have given your love that you once had for me. You're now giving it to idol gods. You're now giving it to the man-made gods uh, and you're not faithful to me anymore. They had transgressed God in every way and in every place. You see, they had transgressed the Lord. A couple of places I want us to read right quickly and we're done is Psalm 32. Psalm 32 and verse number 9. The Bible says, Be ye not as the horse... Or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with a bit and a bridle, lest they come near unto thee. In other words, basically what you could say is, man's supposed to have more sense than the horse. Amen. But yet to keep that horse in line, it's got to wear the, the bridle, the bit and the bridle, or the yoke. And uh, man was given more sense than that. But yet man's acting worse than the animals. Amen. Because I want to tell you one thing the animals do do. They obey God. Amen. What God gives them to do, they're going to do. You can't stop them. Amen. You know, a dog's going to bark. You know, why, you know why a dog barks? Because God put a bark in him. Amen. You know, and he's going to bark. That old pig's going to rut. You ever known a pig not to rut? Huh? You know why he does that? Because God gave it to him. You can't stop him. Oh, that man was like that. To do what God has given him to do. Hosea chapter 4. A couple of verses here, and we'll, we'll wrap things up tonight. Um, let's begin reading verse 13. They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom, and your spouses shall commit adultery. I will punish your daughters uh, when they commit whoredom, 
uh, I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery. For themselves are separated with whores, and they sacrifice with the harlots. Therefore the people that doth not understand shall fall. Though thou, Israel, play the harlot, yet let not Judah offend, and come not ye unto Gilgal, neither go ye up to Bethaven, nor swear the Lord liveth. Verse 16, For Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed him as a lamb in a large place. They had forsaken God. And Jeremiah will continue on in this chapter, verse 21. He'll talk about a degenerate vine. And he goes on to talk about the, the wild ass in the wilderness. I mean, this is how they conducted themselves. This is where they'd come to, you see. From a God that had been so good to them and had helped them so much, now they have become uh, separated. And now judgment is coming. And that's what Jeremiah's message is to them. You now have made your bed. Now you've got to sleep in it. And now judgment's coming. They don't like it. And we'll see that as we go. But most of the time that's the way it is. People don't like to be corrected. Do they? All righty. So mark your place and continue reading in verse 21. And we'll try to scoot through the end of the chapter next week uh, in our study. Of Jeremiah. Let's stand to be dismissed tonight. Father, we thank you again for giving us this time together as we study your word. Thank you for these, Lord, that's been here tonight and participated. Those that's listened by the way of live stream. Thank you, God, for helping us tonight. Lord, give us safety now as we go into our homes. Protect us, Lord, from the evil, from the virus, and all these things, Father, that's, that's in our midst. Give us protection and safety. Thank you, God, for grace and mercy, for loving us, Father, through all these times. And Father, bring us back here the next appointed time. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You want to get.